right, so let's talk about collector doping design aspects. Uh, we just talked about uh, base doping design and discovered that there's a couple of uh, detrimental things if you go too low in base doping. But there was a pointer to maybe increasing um, the early voltage to larger values by uh, manipulating or worrying about this capacitance on the collector base side. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail. All right, so here again is the expression for beta, uh, the, uh, current gain, now including the electrical width in the base and uh, keeping the, the other terms just as we had it before. And we had to find this early voltage, or it's not quite the early voltage, but VA that uh, increase, uh, has a, a dependence on the doping in the base, the width of the base, and the um, capacitance. Uh, again, we would like to get VA to be large. On the other hand, if we uh, so if we increase NB here, that would mean beta goes down. If we uh, increase WB, which would be another term to um, increase VA, that would mean beta again goes down. So those are counterproductive efforts. Okay? So let's see what we can do about this capacitance here, meaning if we could reduce this capacitance, VA could, would go up and we counteract this uh, um, base modulation effect. Okay. So on the base collector side, we are in reverse bias. So there's only majority carriers, and we assume that there's um, no minority carrier influence at all. And that means we don't have any diffusion capacitance. So we're just dealing with a junction capacitance. Okay. If we can reduce this capacitance, we could increase the, the uh, depletion region on the collector side. Okay. Of the N in the collector. Okay. Not the P in the base. The N in the collector. All right. So, the goal might be to, inc uh, to reduce the collector doping to really stretch out your, uh, uh, your collector depletion region. Okay, so let's see what happens. All right, so the recipe we just had is let's make this collector doping low. Okay, and therefore reduce the uh, capacitance. Remember, you have a sheet charge right here. You make this distance larger, your junction capacitance goes down. Okay? Which is what we just said we would like to achieve. We had written down expressions for the length of um, the collector depletion component and the base depletion components like that as a function of bias. Okay? And we just said we are negative bias, VBC. Absolute uh, is a, a negative, okay? So VBC is less than zero. So we're ramping up these um, depletion regions, okay? So, so far, so good. Um, now, as we ramp up the voltage forward, we can drive a lot of current into the structure. And for practical devices, this current can be incredibly large. It can be as large as uh, the doping you might have in your collector. So those two quantities be would become comparable now, okay? Because you said you're going to reduce the doping in the collector. Let's assume we reduced it quite a bit. In that case, the charge that you're driving into the system could be equivalent or of the same order of magnitude. Okay? So, you have this additional charge, and if you do have that additional charge, you need to account for it for charge balance. All right, so we have this additional charge uh, both in the um, base and in the collector, so we add it uh, appropriately. 
And uh, we could calculate, again, as a function of applied voltages, these, um, these depletion region lengths. Okay? So, good. So you have an equivalent collector depletion region length that as you ramp up N compared to uh, the collector doping, so if you get N and, and C uh, um, getting closer to each other, you reduce this coefficient, right? So this starts to be less than 1. In the, uh, and this is uh, getting larger, okay? So overall, so this is definitely larger than 1 and growing, and this is less than 1 and decreasing. So X prime C is getting larger, so you're increasing it further. Okay, so you effectively electrically make the depletion uh, region longer and longer. Up to some point of your saturation velocity that you can support in the current. Okay? So you can now plug in this saturation velocity and the current that is flowing instead of the charge density. And those are now some physical quantities you can obtain depending on your material. Okay? All right, so now what happens? Let's assume you are um, at, at a lower bias and you have a certain amount of electron flowing and they're not that much. Now you, you add more electrons in the system and um, you have an overall space charge that is spread out further into space. So it spreads out deeper into the collector. You can imagine that the electric field at some point is actually reaching the collector. So the junction, again, is lost. And if the junction is lost, then is current, the current is dominated by the collector doping. And so you suddenly have a charge imbalance here that is very different from what you started out with in uh, sort of a mid-range um, applied voltage and current flow. So what does that mean? You can actually measure those things and as you increase the current density in this direction, you can uh, have first at low current densities your electric field, as indicated here, be relatively small and it's at the junction. But then eventually you might actually transfer completely the change of the electric field down at the collector end and you have lost control over the junction altogether. And that's when you have it down here. Okay. Now this is called the Kirk effect. A scientist who figured out, an engineer who figured it out, of why current gain couldn't be increased as you increase voltages that are applied on the collector side and as you reduce doping on the collector side. So, and the critical voltage at which uh, this can happen is associated with a saturation velocity and uh, um, uh, in the system that is now dependent on, uh, say, material quality, silicon, etc. Maybe other materials have slightly different saturation velocities. But this is the critical insight, and we'll see that again um, as we design beta for high frequencies. That will be in the next segment. All right. So here's the Kirk effect and ba uh, uh, base push-out. So in the next uh, segment, uh, we had uh, already discussed uh, base doping, collector doping. Now in the next segment, we're going to talk about emitter doping design questions. So I'll see you in the next section.